Ooh, chapter three, lunch date. Are you taking me to the murder? Friday, October 22nd. Nora, honey, you're going to be late. Uh... Mom yelling at me from downstairs heralded another morning that had managed to arrive way too quickly. I rolled over and tried to bury myself in my blankets. Why can't school start at noon, right? I had no idea when I'd fallen asleep again. Far too late. And despite my mom's persistent calling from downstairs, it wasn't easy to get up. I let out another groan of complaint before I finally rolled out of bed, hating mornings more than usual. My throat hurt, probably courtesy of sitting outside in the cold last night and not changing into dry pajamas before I went back to bed. Nora! I'm up! Ugh, my voice was hoarse too. I stumbled to my closet and threw on some clothes and went to quickly wash my face and brush my hair. I slid my hands under the faucet and leaned over to splash the cold water on my face. I feel gross. I looked up at myself, expecting to see bloodshot, puffy eyes. Instead, I saw a pair of glacial blue eyes staring back at me from the mirror. Ah! I staggered backwards and slammed into the far wall with a crash. My knees gave out and I slowly slid to the floor, both hands clasped to my chest. That had not been me in the mirror. What the heck? Was I just seeing things? I didn't think so. That had been real. There was no way I had imagined that. Heart still lodged firmly in my throat, I slowly stood. I looked apprehensively toward the mirror and... saw my normal hazel eyes staring back at me. It was the same face as always. Same eyes, same hair... Same everything. Okay, right. Freaky mirror trick, check. I let out a long, shaky breath approaching the mirror again. What was that? Nora? Honey? Is everything okay? I thought I heard you yell. Uh, I'm okay, Mom. Sorry, just slipped and nearly fell. Okay. Well, hurry up or you won't have time to eat before Allie gets here. Okay! I stared at my reflection a moment longer before I grabbed my brush and retreated to the safety of my room. I was not okay with that. Not at all. Downstairs, Spencer was already on the hunt for his keys. Okay, I guess the appeasement milk and honey didn't work. So that problem isn't resolved either. Jeez. Of all the brownies out there, I had to get the one that was good at holding grudges. At least Spencer couldn't blame me this morning, considering I'd just gotten up. Mom was watching me worriedly as I made my way to the coffee machine. I stared down at it thoughtfully, still mulling over what had happened upstairs. It took a minute to realize I was also staring at Spencer's keys. It left them out in the open this morning? Sort of, anyway. Maybe that meant it actually was at least somewhat mollified? I'd have to leave it another snack and see what happened. I picked the keys up and set them on the table. Oh, you found them! By the coffee machine. Huh, I guess he didn't think to look on the counter. Well, they're usually in a cabinet or something. Your dad thinks I'm crazy, but... I've been beginning to wonder if maybe the house is haunted or something. It is pretty old. Hmm. Well, she wasn't wrong. It was a household spirit, after all. I suppose it could count as a haunting of sorts. Not that I could tell her that, much less tell her that I could actually see it. Well, if we're going to go off the same assumption as Corbin's route, we don't want Mom thinking along those lines, so... That seems really unlikely. Oh? You don't believe in ghosts? Didn't you join that paranormal club at school? I joined the club. It doesn't mean I'm not a skeptic. 
Besides, if the house was haunted, I would assume the ghost would do something more productive than torment Spencer. I thought that tormenting people was the whole point of being a ghost. I mean, why else stick around after death? Uh, that's a disturbing outlook. Aren't ghosts supposed to have unfinished business or something? Oh, maybe it does. Maybe it's trying to tell us something. Or maybe you should stop staying up late to watch those cheesy ghost hunter shows. I have a great idea. Oh no. Why don't you and your little friends investigate? We could have a little party on Halloween and then... Mom, no. First of all, none of them are little. Second, no one wants to come try to catch a ghost that steals keys and eats homework. It's probably a ghost dog. It doesn't hurt to ask. It does hurt. It hurts my pride as a staunch ghost skeptic. Fortunately, Mom managed to distract herself with something else before the conversation could progress further, and I was finally able to pour myself some coffee. Spencer came back in and immediately spotted the keys on the table. He snatched them up angrily. Oh, Nora found those by the coffee maker this morning. Huh. <laughs> of course she did. I just stared out the kitchen window. I just wasn't up to arguing with him over it again. Apparently, this was enough of a deviation from normal behavior that it caught my mom's attention. Nora? You feeling okay? I eyed her suspiciously, trying to work out if that was a sincere query or if she was just teasing me. She actually looked a bit worried, though. Yeah, just tired. Haven't been sleeping well. Stressed out about school? Yeah, a little. Haha, <laughs> no. School was the least of my worries at the moment. Sleepwalking and seeing strange things in the mirror were definitely the big issues. Then again, maybe the mirror thing was the work of the little house spirit brownie thing. Maybe it was just another prank. Can it do stuff like that? But then... The same thing had happened at school, hadn't it? What did that even mean? Was it something like some kind of fairy attribute awakening? Like Ewan's head... thing? Because if my eyes suddenly changed color, my parents were going to freak out and assume I was going blind. And that was going to be so annoying. At least your mom has blue eyes, so you could like maybe argue you it's just kind of latent or something. Speaking of hauntings and such, how is your club going? Oh, it's fine. You don't sound enthused about it. Are you sure everything's okay? It's really fine. Everyone in it is nice. Hmm. I set my mug in the sink and sighed. <sighs> I think I'm going to go wait for Allie. You didn't have breakfast. Not feeling up to eating. I'd rather go get some air. You can't survive on air. Are you starting to get sick? Before I could escape, she'd captured me and put the back of her hand against my forehead. You don't seem to be running a fever. I'm not sick, just tired. Maybe you should reconsider the club. If you're too stressed out with the workload and getting settled, then... I don't have another ride home, and I'd rather not sit around with nothing to do for an hour after school while I wait for Allie. I shot Spencer a look as I slipped away from Mom and grabbed my things. See you tonight. I stepped outside and let out a long, agonized groan as the door shut behind me. My head was really pounding. Hi, Elliot. I quickly made my way to the usual spot by the fence, surprised to see Elliot waiting on the other side. He didn't seem to be putting the trash out this time. In fact, he looked suspiciously like he was waiting for me. Good morning. Uh, hi. Everything okay? Yeah, yes. I just thought I'd see how you were doing since I wasn't here last night. Ah. Right. Are you okay? You look really pale. Tired. Woke up in my backyard again. Oh. 
I was going to ask about that. Your cat tripped me, so I guess I should thank her for not letting me get very far. What? My cat did. Really? She didn't s say anything? Seem to be hurt or anything. So hopefully you're not either. I narrowed my eyes. Squint. He stumbled over that sentence rather weirdly. No, not hurt. And in any case, tripping over her woke me up before I got very far, so... Huh. I couldn't imagine why he seemed so surprised that his cat had tripped me up like that. It seemed like a pretty normal cat thing to do. Maybe I should get her some kitty treats to thank her. No. She doesn't really like things like that. How's your hand, by the way? Oh, it's fine. I held it up to display the scratches. They'd scabbed over and still hurt a bit, but it wasn't a big deal. Elliot reached out and gently ran his fingers over the scratches. Your eyes are doing that thing again. I'm really sorry about that. I should have warned you that she isn't friendly. Totally not your fault. I am not going to hold you responsible for your cat. Besides, she did help me last night, so I guess we're even. He drew his hand back reluctantly before shoving them both in his pockets. She's kind of a weird cat, isn't she? You have no idea. We stood silently for a moment, and I leaned my head back against the fence, closing my eyes. My head was still throbbing faintly. You know, I was thinking. I mean, I know you ride to school with Allie and all, but... Would you like to start going to school with me? It might be easier for you. Was he asking me to go with him through his closet? Hmm. What stage of a relationship are you at at that point? That's so weird. Not that he was weird, just the fact that his closet had a portal to the school in it. Yeah, like, I, I guess it's, like, a very kind, considerate thing to ask, because she doesn't have to get up so early. You wouldn't have to get up so early. It was so tempting, especially when he said that last part. But I didn't think it was an offer I could accept. I appreciate the gesture, but I don't think I could easily explain that one to my parents. Or Spencer. He would definitely notice. Oh, yeah. I didn't think about that. I forget that your family doesn't know. I guess it's tough being Faye. Thanks for the offer, though, really. It was actually kind of nice that he was worrying about me so much. Oh shoot, I forgot your hoodie again! It's not a big deal. Don't stress about it. Yeah, but... You can always keep it. As a memento from our awesome... late night date. I don't know if I'd call it a date, but I'll take the hoodie. Date? Or... just from the first time you hit me? I don't think I need a memento from that. And I'm not exactly planning on making a habit of hitting you. That's good to know. Anyway, it's still not a big deal. Just give it back whenever. I'll try to remember it tomorrow. Hey, um... I was wondering... Yeah? Do you maybe... Ah, uh, he was trying to get his courage up to ask her. She's like, well, I gotta go! His voice was drowned out by the sound of Allie honking as she drove up. Ah... Uh, looks like my ride is here. Yeah... What were you saying? He shook his head and gave me a sheepish smile. Nothing important. I'll see you at school. Okay! I waved as I climbed into Allie's car. So... You're looking a bit more walking dead than fairy princess today, I must say. I wasn't aware I ever looked particularly fairy princess. Do fairies even have princesses? One assumes. Anyway, still having weird dreams? Or just staying up late reading? Just... the weird dreams. 
Not entirely true, but not entirely false either. That sucks. You have no idea. I could mix you up something to quell the weird dreams if you want. You mean some kind of witchy herbal concoction? Strictly speaking, I suppose that does describe it, yes. Not that I don't trust you, but I think I'm going to decline any unregulated magic substances for the time being. Allie just laughed. <laughs> Fair enough. She gave me a teasing grin. So, you and Mozzie are getting along awfully well lately. By lately, you mean for the past few days? Oh, come on. He's been falling all over himself around you ever since you got back. Really? Falling all over himself? I haven't noticed that. Of course you haven't. What's that mean? That you're dense. Extremely dense. Say it louder, Rally. <laughs> Repeat it. I'm nothing of the sort, thank you very much. Besides, I'm still half convinced Elliot and Brenna are... You know. Brenna? <laughs> no! I don't think so. Really? She hangs all over him, though. Um... Yeah. I don't know why she has such a soft spot for him, but no, they're not... A thing. Well, thing probably describes their relationship, but not romantic thing. She's like a really doting... bully. If you say so. I still wasn't sure I believed that. Just because they weren't dating didn't mean Brenna wasn't interested. I do say so. So don't read too much into her relationship with Mozzie and just go for it. <laughs> Elliot, really? I have standards. Go for what? You mean... It? Wait, what? Go... For what? You mean... Oh my god, you are definitely dense. Go for it! Date him! My face went instantly red. I mean, I knew that's what she meant. It's just, sure, we can say it like that. I don't think I'm really. I mean, we barely know each other. But. There's potential there, right? It's not as if there wasn't potential. It was just. I have a lot going on right now to be worrying about boys. Then don't worry about it. Just let it happen. That's impossible for me. The moment I start thinking about it, I'll start analyzing every situation. I'll constantly think about it. There will definitely be worrying. Lots of worrying. Well, that doesn't bother me. As long as I get all the juicy details. You're horrible. I know. And that cheeky grin told me that she wasn't remotely sorry. <laughs> When we reached school, I dropped some of my things in my locker before heading toward the club with my head still pounding faintly. I wasn't sure if it was a stress headache or just the lack of sleep. Maybe I should have taken something before I left the house. Probably the latter, since that would also explain the mental fogginess. I'd apparently forgotten to zip my backpack. One slight shift of weight and the front flap slipped down, everything tumbled out onto the tile. My books and papers just fell with a loud splat. The pencils and pens went rolling in every direction. Ugh. Dang it. I swear, if that was some kind of ghost, you better hope no one at the school does exorcisms. Ha <laughs> Yeah. Like our club president. I grumbled to myself as I chased down all the pencils. I was reaching for my scattered chemistry homework when a hand swooped in and picked it up first. Oh, you. It was Grant Mitchell. He shot me a friendly smile as he crouched down and handed the papers over. Rough morning. No. No problems here. It's a lovely day and my morning is going just fine. Thank you very much. 
I accepted the papers and quickly shoved them in my backpack. Standing, I brushed myself off and carefully zipped the bag this time. You know, you don't have to be quite so wary of me. Experience indicates otherwise. Experience? We just met. Yes, well, at least one of your predecessors wasn't exactly my favorite person. So I'm disliked by association. Disliked by association. Are all school psychologists this needy? <laughs> Grant just laughed. At the very least, he seemed to have a thick skin. Look, I'm just here to help students. That's all. You don't have to treat me like the enemy. I don't need your help. To be honest, I can see that. It's more your brother I'm worried about. I, I'm gonna stand up for my brother. Leave him alone. He's got problems and he doesn't need you adding to them, okay? There's no reason to worry about him either. In fact, no offense, but I think it would be better if you stayed away from him. You're awfully protective, aren't you? Of course I am. He's my brother. I was under the impression you two didn't get along. That's none of your business! And where did you even get that information? Yesterday you were surprised we didn't join the same club, and now you're talking to me about our troubled relationship. I didn't say it was troubled. Why are you so interested in us? It's my job to be interested in students. I want to make sure you two are settling in. If we need your help, we'll ask for it. It's not your job to badger people. Hey, calm down. I said I just want to help. And I said we don't need your help. I just thought that with the current situation, you might be feeling a little stressed. What current situation? The high schoolers that disappeared? I froze, a shiver crawling down my spine. What? Well, two young men from the public high school disappeared the Friday after you started. And now a girl has gone missing as well. All of them live out in Raven's Glade. That's my neighborhood. I'm surprised you hadn't heard about it yet. It's been all over the news. I've been busy, we don't have a television, and I don't want to waste the data to watch it on my phone or something. I see. Well, I do hope you'll be careful. Perhaps they all just wandered off. But you never know. It doesn't hurt to be careful. I'll remember that. Please, be sure that you do. I'm sure you know firsthand how frightening something like this is. This has nothing to do with me. Of course not. But you should still be careful. He walked past me, setting a large hand on my shoulder. I'll be sure to tell that brother of yours, too. What is his deal? I watched him go with a frown. I really didn't like him. Not just because he's a psychologist. <laughs> There's something, there's always like a double meaning behind his words, and I'm like, I'm squinting along with Nora, trying to suss it out. The club room was occupied when I arrived. Not just by students this time, though. I paused in the doorway, eyeing Vilos, and the back of Elliot's head. With this, it brings the total missing persons up to four. Five, if you count. Up here, too? He stopped the moment he saw me. So are the missing people... associated with vampires? Or... Is it just that that's Elliot's particular thing he's looking into for the agency? Or maybe this is the big case Ali was talking about the other day. Hmm. Miss Lewis, good morning. Hi. I shot Elliot a questioning look. He fiddled with his choker and chuckled awkwardly. 
Uh, uh, missing persons? It's nothing for you to be concerned about. I lifted an eyebrow. Really? That was awfully dismissive. You mean those three high schoolers are missing? Though you said it brings the total up to five. Vila sighed heavily. I wasn't aware you had heard about the case. Oh. Uh, Mr. Mitchell mentioned it to me just now. Though he also said it was all over the news anyway. <laughs> what? I haven't heard anyone here call him that except Philos. I raise an eyebrow. Philos gave Elliot a scathing look as he adjusted his glasses. Did Mr. Mitchell say why he felt compelled to share the story with you? It just came up. He said he was worried I was stressing out about it or whatever, considering my past. And also I live in the same neighborhood. Velos frowned and looked away. The agency has been investigating the matter since last week. The agency? So this isn't just a normal missing person case? When five people go missing in this area, it really is. Fair enough. But Grant said there were only three. He was mistaken. I see. Speaking of your past, I do hope you're not still in the habit of wandering in the woods. N no Not really. Not exactly true. Good. I would recommend that you refrain from doing so for the time being. Thanks for the warning. He got up and started to leave, but paused as he set his hand on the library door. And Miss Lewis. As a word of warning, since the agency will be working on this mi missing person's case, you may find most of the other students quite busy trying to pick up the slack regarding our usual preparations for this weekend. You were going to say murder, weren't you? <laughs> we'll be working on this mur- I mean, missing person. Yes. You're finding people like suck dry of blood, aren't you? I'm gonna call it now. Please don't take it too personally. I grimaced. He was definitely poking me about my attitude yesterday, wasn't he? I'll try. He went into the library, leaving me and Elliot alone. A missing persons case. Already up to five people total. And it was something paranormal. Around the time I'd gone missing, there was a rash of other disappearances as well. It was why I captured so much attention when I returned safely. I was the only one that did. At the time, people assumed my disappearance was related to the others. Is there like a vampire that's sleeping here? And every few years, like, wakes up and is super thirsty and just, like, kills a bunch of people and then goes back to bed again? <laughs> is that what's happening? If that was the case, and either my disappearance wasn't related to being Fae, or all the other disappearances were related to. And if that was the case, then... Did it mean these disappearances, or any of the others that plagued the town, were also related? I should have asked Vilas before he left. I nearly forgot Elliot was there until he cleared his voice slightly. Uh, <clears throat> hey. Um... I got something for you. Aw, he got me a coffee from the murder! It's so cute. He reached down beside the sofa and picked up a paper cup with a plastic lid. He handed it to me. A familiar and delicious aroma wafted up to my nose. Coffee? Yeah, I stopped to get one for myself and thought you might like one. I figured I'd see you here. Ah. I leaned down and breathed in the fragrance. It was good. I gave him a slightly teasing smile. I look tired enough to need another cup? No! I mean, 
You seem tired, yes. You don't look that tired? You look a little pale, that's all. That reminded me that he'd said the same thing to me on my very first day of school. That encouraged me to get more iron. Smiling to myself, I took the cup, curiously studying the logo. It was the silhouette of a large crow. There weren't any words or anything to be seen. Where's this from? Oh, it's from a cafe on the square. Corvin's family owns it. I didn't know what kind of coffee you liked, so I just got you Americano. Merle thought you'd like it. Merle? Cor's older brother. Ah, I see. I immediately pictured someone tall, blonde, and equally accident-prone. Not even close. Their parents probably had a tough time with it. So you went all the way to the square, picked up coffee, and still got back to the club room before me? Well, the truth is, the club is connected to a courtyard by the cafe. And since my room is connected to the club... Ah, short trip. Jeez. I couldn't imagine how fast people must travel around if all the doorways were connected like that. I guess it's better than traveling by chimney. Yeah, it's pretty convenient. At some point I'll have to sit down with Allie and have her give me more details on what all places the club is connected to. Oh, I can do that sometime. I mean, if you want. I don't mind. Okay, sounds good. I left my coffee on the table and went to retrieve my usual books before returning to the sofa. I'm just glad the library requires a simple knock. I do not want to accidentally walk in on someone I don't know by accident. Some places do require spoken incantations and the like to access. Besides, you can lock a door as well, which would stop anyone from going through even if they use the correct knock. Good to know. Maybe next time someone asks me if I've seen anything weird, I should tell them that instead of a magical land in his closet, my neighbor has a coffee shop. And a school. <laughs> Please do not tell anyone about that. Why not? I'm the one they'd think was crazy. But then you'd get carted off to a padded room and I'd never see you again. Fair point. I returned with my books, wondering if I'd get a chance to read or not this morning. I was determined to make at least some progress. So what's on today's study schedule? Anything in particular? I spread my books on the table, trying to decide which one to start with. Not sure. I'm still trying to sort everything out and decide on my priorities. I mean... I need to figure out the whole, you know... sleepwalking thing. But I also still have to try to find some answers about five years ago. And in the end... I don't know. Maybe if I can find out what sort of fairy I actually am, I'll figure out the rest of it too. But so far, no sleepwalking fae have turned up. Heritage isn't that important. I mean, I know my dad's Italian, but I couldn't tell you what all I might have on my mom's side. It doesn't make that much difference. But being Italian doesn't give you magic that might randomly pop up at inconvenient times. I mean, look at Ewan. His fae traits asserted themselves and now his head falls off. Good point. As for me, the moment I found out I was Faye, I started wandering around outside at night. Oh, and it just happens to be conveniently timed with people vanishing. And then there was the weird... I thing. Yeah, that's... bad timing. Do they have any idea what could be causing the disappearances? Well... I guess... they probably have some ideas. If I could figure out why I started sleepwalking, maybe I could find a way to keep myself inside at night. Though... I hate being sidetracked by it. I really wanted to just focus on finding out if there was a connection between my being Faye and what happened to me as a kid. Elliot was studying me silently. You mean that time you went missing, right? That time, yes. And the time before that. And... What is it? 
Well, since that first day Ali brought me to the club, I've just been thinking a lot about my childhood and different things that happened back then. I've started remembering things. Like imaginary friends Spencer and I used to have. Or just weird little things that would happen around the house. I always wrote them off as games and pretend play. But now I kind of wonder if weird things have been a part of my life a lot longer than I thought, you know? I mean, if that's the case, then it helps explain the bigger things, like going missing and everything that went along with that. Maybe I didn't vanish. Maybe I frolicked in the woods doing magic or something. Maybe that's how Spencer got hurt. What exactly happened back then anyway? I mean, if it's okay to ask. It happened before I moved here, and I've just heard... rumors. I've been wondering what really happened. How you wandered off and stuff. I stared at him for a moment, surprised he'd said that. What? Is it not okay to ask? I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. <laughs> Um. Hmm. I mean, we have been teasing him, so maybe that is the way to go? Because I'm not sure about the, it's not really that. Like, she might just clam up and be like, mm, I just, I don't talk about it. Well, I could tell you, but as you're probably suspecting already, if I did, I'd have to kill you. Ha oh. ha. Stake through the heart, right? Anyone is going to die if you shove a piece of wood in their heart, you know. Touché, actually. Hmm, that's true. And I can't just push you into the sunlight since clearly that doesn't do the trick. Nope. I'm afraid we do not burn up in the sun. Give me some sunscreen and I'm good. I rubbed my chin thoughtfully. Hmm. This is harder than I thought. I gave him a teasing look. Do vampires even have weaknesses? Well, there is the whole blood thing. Oh, that's right! I could just... somehow... keep you away from blood. Forever. That would be pretty hard. He gave me a wide, toothy grin. I mean, if you were the only one around, I'd have to just bite you instead. Uh-huh. Trying to turn the tables on me, are you? I'll have you know that biting me will not be easy. I am morally opposed to cannibalism. It's not cannibalism if I'm a vampire in your fae. I'm morally opposed to the consumption of sentient creatures as food. Technically, I'd just be consuming your blood, and it's not sentient. To be honest, this is probably the weirdest conversation I've ever had. <laughs> well, I actually can't say the same, but you do get used to the weirdness after a while. We sat there silently for a moment. I sneaked a look at him. I think I successfully distracted from the conversation, because I don't think she was going to tell him anyway, but this is more lighthearted than just, I don't want to talk about it, clamp mouth shut. You don't really want to bite me, do you? Uh, well, maybe a little. Just a little. I mean, kind of. I mean, um... <laughs> I, I appreciate your honesty. <laughs> Even though you know, like, this is gonna weird her out, but I kind of want to get in on that neck. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I love that Probably 70% of Nora's facial expression during Elliot's route so far has just been this face, like the squint, suspicious look, which is so good. 
Ugh. He sneaked a quick look at my neck and flushed pink. Cannibal! You are totally a cannibal! I totally am not a cannibal! <laughs> I burst out laughing. <laughs> this is so weird, but I guess it's not that bad. Hey, Nora. Yeah? It's okay if you don't want to answer me. I mean, answer what I asked before. I probably shouldn't have asked. Well, he noticed. He noticed we deflected. No, that's not it. I mean, it's not that I don't want to. But there really is a lot that I don't know. Everything I do know, you can pretty much look up in the old news reports if you want. I just don't remember most of it. I vaguely remember going into the woods. After that, nothing. I know that while Spencer was out with the search party looking for me, he got separated from them. Then ran out of the woods in hysterics with a huge bump on his head. He lost the vision in his left eye because of it. And then I showed up. Totally fine, kind of in a daze, but with no memory of what happened. Spencer's hated me ever since. Or maybe hate isn't the right word. He's suspicious of me. Like, whatever it is that I don't remember is something that hurt him. I apologize for bringing it up. That was pretty insensitive, huh? No! Not at all! I mean... It's just... Well, I mean, it's not an easy question to answer because I don't really know the whole story. At the time, I think everyone just tried to suspend belief because, well, it happened. When reality seems to defy belief, you find ways to make it plausible. Now I know there was more to it. I just have to find out what the more is. Well, if I was in your situation, I'd want answers too. Um, I could help if you want. With your research, I mean. I mean, I'm terrible with research, but I can try. You don't have to do- I know I don't have to, but I want to help you. I know you can do this on your own, but I want you to know you don't have to do it on your own, you know? I mean, if that's okay, I don't want you to feel like you have to let me. I smiled. There he went again. Elliot. What? He shot me a panicked look as I dissolved into laughter. He really was an extremely earnest guy. That's a great way to describe him. <laughs> but the way he always backtracked into uncertainty made me wonder if he was just really used to getting rejected or something. Still, though. What is it? You're a real cutie. It's just... You're cute. I... I am? You always act like I'm going to bite your head off or just offering to help. I just don't want you to think I'm being pushy. I've been told I can be. Really? You don't come across that way at all. It's kind of a vampire thing, I guess. Vampires are pushy? We can be a little overbearing. It's, well, I guess it's kind of instinctive. I guess you have, like, that presence, right? Just, like, this overbearing presence. I can kind of understand that. Hmm. I realized pretty quickly how easy it was to be really... obnoxious. I just try really hard not to be, that's all. So you could have been a mark. Good to know. So that's why he worries so much? Well, I don't get that feeling from you at all, so try to relax a little. You don't have to walk on eggshells with me. I know this might be hard to believe, but I'm pretty good at speaking my mind. Whoa, really? I mean, you're usually so quiet. 
Right? Very shy. Definitely doormat material. Oh, yes. Thank you. For... for calling you a doormat? No. I shoved his arm playfully. For offering to help me research. Actually... Maybe we can ask Brenna if she has any thoughts. I mean, she's Faye too. That would be great. Except I don't think she likes me. Why does no one ever want to ask Ewan? Ewan is cinnamon bun. Ewan would love to help. Ewan actually has answers to things and just thinks we know already. <laughs> My poor quiet boy eating lunch under a tree by himself every day. Please, someone talk to him. She can be pretty moody, but it might be more helpful than just reading books. I just think it's best to explore all avenues. We can try to ask Ewan too, but he hasn't had much direct contact with fairy society. Still get like a baseline! Any info's good at this point! Brenna used to live with them. She's older than she seems, so she's probably a better potential information source. We'll just have to find a way to bribe her into cooperating. Bribe? I found that bribes are definitely the key to interacting with her. As I listened to Elliot mull over how to approach Brenna for information, I realized that I really had gotten the wrong impression of him initially. Elliot. Hmm? Thank you. I mean, for listening to me. For trying to help. For not telling anyone about the sleepwalking. I owe you one. Or three. I watched his heat rapidly spread across his cheeks. He rubbed the back of his neck anxiously and quickly looked away. It's... You don't owe me. I just want to help. I reached for his hand, giving it a squeeze. <gasps> so wholesome. I do have to thank you. Nora. Good morning, you two. <laughs> Why are you always here with the cock block, Corbin? Good god, this happened in Danny's room too, where you're like, mmm, have you guys finished with your order? <laughs> now you're like, good morning, it's a beautiful day. Look at you holding hands. <sighs> Freaking Corbin. I'm actually kind of glad that I did Corvin's route first, because in my head canon now, he's just jealous every time we go for another guy, and it's just constantly like, Hey! Ugh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm done. Alright, Corvin burst into the room with a wide grin as he barreled toward us, and tripped on the edge of the rug, face planting spectacularly in front of us. Wow. It should be noted for the record that Elliot has vampire reflexes, has caught Nora numerous times, and just watched Corbin faceplant <laughs> and did nothing. <laughs> oh, so good. Uh, you okay, Cor? Yup. <laughs> he was up in a flash and immediately joined us on the sofa. Anyway, hey, Nora. Haven't had much chance to chat with you lately. Oh, hey. Coffee from the murder. Do you like it? The murder? Oh, that's the name of the cafe I got it from. It's called the murder. Like, murdering people? No, no, no. It's because my brothers and I are wizards, right? But most of us have crow familiars. Well, there are a couple of ravens. And a magpie. They're all corvids, though. It was easier to just pick the murder. Sounded better than the unkindness. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, I got my coffee from the unkindness this morning. Or the conspiracy. That sounds more like a movie title. Something really dramatic, with lots of rain in it. 
I don't know, those are like solid second and third choices. How many brothers do you have if a lot of you make a full-on murder of crows? Six. I'm the youngest, though. Anyway, what did you think of the cafe? Cool, right? It actually just reminds me of that joke. I don't know if you, any of you guys have seen it, but it's two crows just on the grass, and the caption underneath is attempted murder. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> Comment below if you get what the joke is. Wink. Oh, I haven't been there. Elliot got this for me. Oh, did he? Did you? Elliot. And it begins. I stopped by earlier. He wrapped an arm around Elliot's shoulder and pulled him close, grinning and giving him a thumbs up. <laughs> I approve. Whoa. You're moving in quite quickly, aren't you? I'm impressed. Corvin. Before I could stop him, Corvin picked up my cup and took a sip. Hey, I did not offer it this time, sir. Ooh. Americano. Good choice. Glad you like it. Can I have my cup back? I haven't even tried it yet. Oh, sorry. He handed it over and I took a sip while glaring at him. Aw oh, man, indirect kiss again. Oh. It actually was quite good. Uh. <laughs> oh, you move fast. Anyway. Hey, Nora, you want your cup back? Yeah, sure. Elliot screaming inside. He stole my first kiss with her <laughs> right in front of me. Oh, no. I'm enjoying this way too much. Just just for the record, this is great. For some reason, Elliot had a weirdly stricken look on his face as he watched me take a sip from the cup. I mean, he was the one that gave it to me. I was pretty sure I was supposed to drink it. So, what are you up to this morning, Corvin? Corvin's smile faded. Oh, I had to report something to Velos. Report? Just something he'd asked my brother to look into. Doesn't seem like good news. Unfortunately not. Nothing for you to worry about, though. Yeah, I, ke I kept hearing that a lot lately. He stood up and gave us another smile before darting off toward the library. See you in Trig, Nora. And Elliot and I were alone again. I swear he never stays in one place for long, does he? <laughs> Somebody give my boy Elliot a hug. He's so done. He tried so hard. Things were going, like, super well. Things were going super well twice today. First, Ellie, Allie ruined it, and Corvin really ruined it. <laughs> it's just not been his day. Corvin, I'm going to kill you. Elliot was muttering something, but I didn't quite catch it. He did look like he was about to strangle that pillow, though. What was that? He turned to me, smiling brightly. Nothing. How's the coffee? He's smiling, but somehow he looks mad. I raised an eyebrow curiously. Boys are weird. It's good. I'll probably have to stop by the cafe on my own sometime. An idea suddenly came to me. Actually, why don't you let me treat you? No matter what you say, I feel like I owe you. At the very least, I should try to make up for smacking you the other night. Elliot's eyes went almost comically wide. You're asking me... out? For coffee? <laughs> his voice cracked slightly, but he quickly cleared his throat and tried again. <clears throat> I'd love to. I mean, yeah, that would be great. Maybe this weekend, then? Yeah, that's... that's perfect. Saturday? Sounds great. And on that note, the bell is about to ring. And I didn't get any studying done. Again. Oh, sorry. 
That's probably my fault, isn't it? Even after I said I'd help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but important things were, were had today. No, don't apologize. I'm glad we talked. This has all been pretty overwhelming. I'm still half convinced that sleepwalking is just stress. Though as much as I was saying that, I didn't really think it was true. It just didn't feel like normal sleepwalking. Anyway, talking to someone kind of helps me get myself back on track when I'm ready to just bury myself in a hole and try to ignore it all. And talking to you is definitely better than talking to Grant Mitchell, no matter what he tries to tell me. Well, you can talk to me anytime you need to. I hope you know that. I do. Thank you, it really does mean a lot. We should probably head down. His statement was punctuated by the first bell ringing. I gathered my poor, neglected research books and left them stacked on the table as we left. In any case, I was the only one cleaning lately, so I might as well just leave them there for later. Together, Elliot and I headed downstairs. This time, we weren't interrupted by Brenna on the way down. <laughs> 